Okay, so welcome to lecture 9.1 of uh, group theory course. This is the first lecture of chapter 9. And uh, in, ch in chapter 9, we start discussing uh, the applications of group theory to periodic solids. Until now, we have considered applications of group theory to molecular systems. And now we are going to discuss applications to solids. And we start uh, by reviewing some of the mathematical background for uh, uh, space groups. Space groups is, uh, as we're going to see, um, will play the, the role for solids that the point groups played for molecules. These are the proper uh, groups uh, that one has to consider when discussing periodic solids. Okay. So, so uh, we start by uh, reminding you that uh, in general we are interested in considered, uh, considering solutions of a, a Schrodinger equation, of a one electron Schrodinger equation in the presence of a periodic, a periodic potential. So, in general we have uh, this type of Schrodinger equation in which we have a, a V of R. V of R is the one electron potential for this equation and for a periodic system this V of R has what we call translation symmetry. That means that when I translate the potential by a, a, a Bravais lattice vector R the potential remains the same. So it's invariant under a translation of uh, a lattice vector R. Okay, <clears throat> but not only that, we are going to see that uh, translation symmetry is not the only one, the only type of symmetry that we can have in a crystal. We are go also going to have, in many cases, different types of point group symmetries, the same symmetries that we have studied for molecules, like rotations, reflections, improper rotation, and inversion. So the full symmetry of your crystal potential will be, in general, a combination of translation symmetry and uh, point group symmetries. Okay? <clears throat> so uh, let, let's, let's define a notation for uh, uh, writing down the, the, this uh, so-called space group symmetry operations. So this is, in general, how we going to uh, indicate uh, a general uh, symmetry operation of a crystal. As I said, this could be a, 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 a translation, it could be a rotation, but it can also be a combination of the two things. So this is the most general case in which you have a uh, a point group uh, operation that we call uh, R alpha, for instance, a rotation, combined with a translation by a vector tau. So this is the general notation for a combined uh, symmetry, uh, a, a given operation of the space group symmetry operation. Sometimes in the book, and we are also going to write for short we're going to write simply as alpha and tau. Tau is a vector, but sometimes we're going to omit the vector notation, okay? So this is the same, uh, the same thing, all right? Okay, so this is a notation, but how, uh, how can we write uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the effect of this combined operation into a certain vector? So, first of all, let, let's just let's discuss some special cases. So, the identity operator for this uh, group is going to be this one. That is the identity for rotations, E, and zero translation. So, this is clear, the identity operator. Okay? So, when you don't have translations, when, when translations are zero, then you have just pure rotations or in general point group op operations such as such as reflections 
and uh, uh, inversions and improper improper rotations. Okay, then this is uh, this is uh, uh, this is alpha zero. Okay, and the other special case that you may have is uh, when you have uh, uh, identity for for point group operation and a certain a certain uh, um, translation tau. So this is a pure translation by a vector tau. So in this case, as we're going to see in a minute, actually we can write that the vector tau is actually one of the lattice vectors R n of your Brave lattice. Okay. So so we're going to discuss this particular case in a minute. Okay. So um, now going back to to the to the question that I proposed, how can we relate this operator alpha tau of the space group to a coordinate transformation? So the idea, this is you, you should see this as a as a definition of this operator. How it acts on a certain vector r. It it leads this it leads r to another vector r prime in which you rotate by the matrix alpha and you add you translate by tau so first you rotate by a certain transformation matrix it's not only rotations but also other operations like reflections and inversion and then you translate by tau so this is the definition of this uh, compound operation alpha tau okay all right. So we we are, we are trying to prove actually that this uh, set of space group operations form a group. First of all, right. So uh, we we know that there is an identity already. Now we we're gonna see the multiplication rule, right? You have to prove that. Uh, when I multiply two different uh, symmetry operations, then I, I get another symmetry operation that belongs to the group. Okay, so uh, this is the the. So th we propose that uh, this is the rule for multiplication for multiplying two different uh, space group operations: alpha tau and beta tau prime. Okay. So uh, that I, I I'm, I'm going to prove that I'm going to prove this result. Okay. So let let's prove this result. So what we want to do is to find uh, what is the net result of applying two operations, beta tau prime. But first I apply the first operation I, I apply is uh, point group operation alpha and the translation tau and then beta tau prime and let's see what is the result of that compound operation on a vector r so we already know from the previous slide we know the result of a single operation alpha tau on r it gives me alpha r plus tau right so the result of that, when I apply the first operation first, I have beta tau prime, and then another vector, which is matrix alpha times r plus tau. Then now I apply the second operation, use the same rule, and then when I use the same rule, I basically have now this is the vector I must consider, the full vector. I'm I will have beta alpha R plus beta tau
plus tau prime, right? Okay, and this is precisely that. So this is the result of uh, using as the point group operation the product of beta alpha, just like here, and as a translation, this is the translation vector. So the translation is beta tau plus tau prime. Okay, so this is the proof of this result. Okay, so we can we can also uh, investigate if uh, so this is a multiplication rule for space group operations let's see if they they in general commute we're gonna see that in, in in general they do not commute so let's investigate commutation so commutation re would require that beta tau prime alpha tau is equal to alpha tau times beta tau prime so is it true so in, in general that's not the case so it, we're gonna apply the, the same rule here so in the left hand side I have what I just wrote before when I apply this to a vector r the result is beta alpha applied to r plus beta applied to tau plus tau prime and in the right hand side it's just the opposite I just switch alpha and beta and tau and tau prime so I would have alpha times beta plus alpha applied to tau prime plus tau okay and you can certainly see that's not true uh, in in a general case so commutation so this is different so commutation does not apply so in general space group operations do not commute um, and remember that simple translations they always commute right so the, the the translation part of the space group operations they will always commute but in general the the full a full uh, more general space group uh, symmetry operation they do not commute all right okay thank you yeah, very good so let's calculate the inverse so we have the identity we have the the multiplication um, it's within the group so this is clearly I forgot to, to 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 say that so this the result of the multiplication is clear another element of the space group because the compound operation point group operation beta alpha it's also a, a, a point group operation and this is a general translation as well so this is a, a member of the group and the final uh, property that you have to verify uh, to make sure that the, the this is a group is the is to calculate the inverse so what is the inverse uh, I propose that this is the uh, the inverse operation for the space group operation alpha tau and let's verify if that's the case so what I'm gonna do I, I'm gonna multiply alpha tau by its inverse and uh, let's see if I get the identity so I, I'm gonna multiply this by the proposal that I have for the inversion for the inverse operation And again, I should use the, the uh, I should use the multiplication rule now, right? So if, if you remember the multiplication rule, uh, oh, let, let's do this. Let's let's first uh, let's see how 
what's the result of that into a certain vector r right this is uh, alpha tau and uh, the resulting vector is um, alpha inverse r minus the translation alpha inverse tau right and if I do that again now using alpha I get alpha alpha inverse r minus alpha alpha inverse tau plus tau so this is clearly r so this is clear this is clearly the 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 identity operator identity zero for the space group okay okay so and and the, this is the inverse we have the multiplication we have the identity and and clearly the associative law uh, is it's it's valid because we are dealing with um, matrices and, and uh, vectors the, this there is always associative law in these cases and so the the conclusion is that this the set of uh, operations of this type form a group and this is called the space group okay what well, next we're gonna see what's uh, the matrix representation for for the space group we can represent this compound operation rotation plus translation using a single matrix and it's not a three by three matrix like alpha is but it's actually a four by four matrix so the matrix operation I propose that is for the space group operation alpha tau is a 4x4 matrix that I can write in a concise manner like that it's a 4x4 matrix and tau is the translation vector is a in this case is a column vector and uh, alpha as we we have seen before it's a 3 by 3 rotation matrix rotation or inversion or improper rotation or reflection okay and zero zero is a, a, a what what I mean by zero here is a, a three zeros in a row so this means that this is a four by four four by four matrix so and if let's see I, I'm gonna use as a basis that plays the role of, uh, of a certain uh, uh, point or a certain vector R I, I'm gonna use one R okay in this case R is also a, a column vector with three coordinates And so, so R is X, Y, Z. So let's see what's the result. So of applying this this matrix four by four matrix on this uh, vector of, of uh, dimension four. So let's see. Notice that.
when I do this operation, let's see what's the result of that. So it's one, and here I have tau plus alpha r, right? Which is simply r prime that I have defined before. Oops. So this 4x4 four four matrix uh, reproduces the same result that I, I have used before as the definition of the compound operation alpha tau. Okay, so this indeed is a possible matrix representation of uh, the space group operation. All right. Okay, so there are uh, uh, two types of important space group operations that we call compound space group operations, and uh, these are uh, glide planes and screw vectors. So, uh, in general, this translation vector tau does not need to be a Bravais lattice vector, a lattice vector R. Okay? Uh, mo mo many times it will be, but not always. So, when that does not happen, I have we have two cases to consider. It, it could be a glide plane operation or a screw axis operation. So what is a glide plane? A glide plane is a translation combined with a reflection. Okay? And you can see right here. Suppose this is our crystal. I have atoms here and they are displaced from a horizontal plane by certain uh, z-coordinate which is positive in this case and negative in this case. It's positive for A and negative for A prime. So clearly if I make a translation and then I, I reflect about the horizontal axis this is a symmetry operation of, a, uh, of my system. So this is clearly a symmetry operation of uh, this, the, the space group. Okay? But you can see that this does not correspond to a Bravais lattice vector. So this in one dimension, this one dimensional case, or in, in this direction, sorry, this is the smallest uh, Bravais lattice, the size of the lattice constant, right? And you can see clearly that you can have some symmetry operation that combines, in this case, reflection and translation, but in which the translation vector is not a lattice vector. And this is what we call glide plane symmetry. Okay? The other type of special uh, uh, combined symmetry is what we call screw axis. Screw axis combines translation with rotation. And again, the translation here in this case is not uh, a Bravais lattice vector translation. Okay? For instance, it's like a, a screw. So imagine that you, you have a symmetry axis, Z axis right here. And you, in this case, you have a threefold symmetry axis. So you, you rotate by 2 pi over 3, right? But I don't have an atom uh, right here, but I, I have an atom right here. So I have to rotate by 2 pi over 3 and translate by a certain lattice vector. Let me draw it in a different place. So you can see that if I rotate by 2 pi over 3 and translate by this vector, this little vector tau, which is not, uh, um, 
it's not a, 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 a lattice vector. This is a lattice vector R. I still get a symmetry operation. Okay, this is called a screw axis. So in, in this picture, I have many examples of, of different uh, screw axis operations. I can have screw axis uh, of uh, pi of 2 pi over 3, of 2 pi over 4, 2 pi over 6. And you, 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 you can have different types of screw axis. For instance, here you can see that I can rotate left hand or right hand rotation. That is, I can rotate by 2 pi over 3 or minus 2 pi over 3 combined with the same translation. This is the, these are two different types of screw axis that I call 3, 2 and 3, 1. So another way to, to, to see that is by these stereograms, okay? So in these stereograms, a 3, 1 operation is a rotation by 2 pi over 3, and the next guy here is it's a 1 third, 1 third of the lattice constant. And then I rotate again, and the other guy here is two-thirds of the lattice constant. And then I rotate again, I recover the original projection in the XY plane. All right? But I can do it in the opposite way. Here I, I did a, a counterclockwise rotation. I can do a, a clockwise rotation. It's a different type of screw axis. And you, you, have, you can see that you can have many different... Uh, possibilities and uh, but it's important to get used to this notation we are going to use stereograms a lot and when I have uh, one third two thirds or one half one fourth three fourths meaning that uh, the projection along uh, uh, the projection al uh, along the z-axis the main symmetry axis it's one third or two thirds of the total lattice constant okay we are going to use that a lot. Okay, so next topic is uh, the translation subgroup. So we have a, a, a certain elements of the space group G, the total space group G, that have only, we, we don't rotate, we use the identity for the point group part and we have some translations tau these are called this is these operations are part of the translation subgroup t t is a subgroup of, of g clearly right and uh, this is this translation subgroup defines the brevet lattice the collection of points that are equivalent by translations okay So, for these types of uh, symmetry operations, actually, this is translation subgroup T. I have the identity and tau, but actually, in this case, the translations vectors must be the Bravais lattice vectors that I can call R or sometimes the book also calls Rn. Rn. Okay. So Rn is the are the vectors of the Bravais lattice. They can be written as a linear combination with integer numbers of a1, A2, A3. In general, AI, these are called the primitive vectors of the Bravais lattice. Okay. So, I'm going to prove now the translation subgroup it's a self-conjugate or invariant subgroup. T 
que é self conjugate if you remember from chapter one a self conjugate subgroup is such that when I make this operation I multiply in the left and in the right by a given element of the main group in general alpha tau and this is a, an element of the, the translation subgroup identity and R and this is the inverse of alpha tau If I, if I recover another element of the translation subgroup after, after doing this operation, then, then uh, I have a self-conjugate subgroup. So let's see if that works. So let's see. This is equal to um, alpha tau identity r and then you remember the inverse of alpha tau the inverse of alpha tau we have discussed that already is alpha inverse and minus a translation by minus alpha inverse tau right okay now i apply this this operation into that and i use the multiplication rule so the result is if you use the, the, the multiplication rule, the product rule that we, we, we have discussed before, the result of that is uh, B beta times, so in this case, app, uh, identity times alpha inverse, which is alpha inverse. And here I just add the vector R, so um, minus alpha inverse tau plus r okay okay now I finally uh, multi make this multiplication so this is alpha alpha inverse which is the identity and alpha inverse minus alpha uh, so this is tau plus, sorry, tau minus tau plus alpha r plus tau. And minus tau and tau cancel, so this is equal to simply using the identity operation for rotations and making a translation by a vector alpha r okay but alpha r since r is a breve lattice vector alpha r is another breve lattice vector so another lattice vector so this is clearly another element so this is another element of the translation subgroup. So this proves that actually the translation subgroup is uh, invariant or self-conjugate group. Okay, and if you remember from chapter one, there is an interesting property of of translation uh, of of the. Uh, self-conjugate uh, subgroups that is the cosets of self-conjugate subgroups all cosets of self-conjugate subgroups they form the collection of them they form the so-called factor group which is a, uh, which is an important uh, concept so it's interesting to investigate now the cosets of the translation subgroup so let's do that. I will call the one possible coset, let me call it C of alpha, 
which is the collection, I'm going to use the square bracket to indicate the collection of all possible E of R, sorry, E and R uh, subgroup, translation subgroup element multiplied on the right, this is the right coset, but I could also do the left coset, multiplied on the right by a certain element of the uh, space group associated to a certain uh, point group operation alpha, okay? So, this, this square brackets mean that I, I, I consider all possible translations are okay okay so if I make this multiplication this is the set of all possible elements of this kind rotate by R and translate by let's call it tau prime in which tau prime is simply the sum of the two vectors okay so for each translation r there is a, a, a this is a it's going to be a member of the coset c alpha okay this is the definition of the coset so as I said before, uh, all cosets of uh, so th there is a there is a, a a point group symmetry operation alpha, and we associate to that a coset with many many different uh, space group operations that I call C of alpha, and the collection of all cosets, as we have seen in chapter one. Uh, for instance, for the the identity for the operation C alpha for a, a given C beta, C gamma, etc. They form the factor group, and I, I'm going to call this factor group G divided by T. Because this is like the, the full space group G, and I factored out the translation group T. This is like I removed the translations, or I divided by the translations, and then I get a factor group which contains only, it's like it, it contains information only about the point group operations, alpha, beta, gamma, I mean the, the, the rotations, the reflections, etc. So this is an interesting thing to do, we're gonna see that next chapter as well. So it is an important concept, the, the factor group G over T. So we are going to see that this, this factor group is actually isomorphic with the point group of the crystal. For each space group we, we're gonna associate a point group that it's precisely the, the, the factor group G over 3. It's a collection of point group operations that leave at least one point of the crystal invariant, okay? So, this is isomorphic with the point group of the crystal. We are going to explore that in more detail uh, in the next, uh, the next few lectures. Okay? All right. Okay, so let me now come to an uh, important definition, which is the definition of symorphic and non-symorphic space groups. There are two types of space groups, symorphic and non-symorphic, and 
so in general this is a as we have seen already many times this is in general uh, one symmetry operation of the space group combining a point group operation alpha and a translation tau but we can we can we can always write a, a certain arbitrary translation tau as a sum of a lattice vector translation rn plus uh, tau alpha in which tau alpha so this is a lattice vector and tau alpha is contained is a translation by a smaller vector a, a vector that is contained in the primitive unit cell of the crystal so whenever the vector tau is outside the primitive cell I can subtract a vector rn and consider a vector tau alpha which is contained which is within the primitive cell of the crystal okay sometimes we we understand that this is a, a basis vector in crystallography so if this is the case then it we can always do that we can uh, uh, write the total space group operation as the product of this operation which is uh, simply a translation right this is translation this is a from the translation Bravais lattice group subgroup plus another operation which is a compound operation okay so let, let's see, uh, uh, let me write that again. I have just shown you that in general, I can always write alpha tau as the product of a translation by a lattice vector. And a rotation or point group operation of uh, uh, that includes possibly a translation by tau alpha okay so these tau alpha they are going to be either zero or non-primitive translation Okay, like uh, as we saw before, glide planes, screw axes that involve non-primitive lattice vector translations. Okay, so this is uh, uh, a result but that leads us to the following definition following definition of of uh, symorphic and non symorphic group so if i if if i can choose an origin of coordinate systems the with a suitable origin of of a uh, choice of the origin of the, the the coordinate systems of my my lattice if i find that all elements of the group g they are in this form that is i can always write them as a combination of um, a translation a pure translation times a pure rotation that is a rotation that does not involve any translation if that is the case then that is tau alpha is zero then the space group is called symorphic.
or simple space group okay but if that's not the case if if for any any choice of origin then i cannot do that there's always a possibly a, a tau alpha which is not zero for at least one operation then g is called a non-symorphic group okay i hope this is clear um, but uh, we're going to see many examples so whenever i have glide planes and, uh, and screw axes in general i have a, a non-symorphic group and uh, if that's not the case in most cases we have symorphic space groups okay all right so so that when when i, I have this situation then if it's if this is a symorphic group that is for any element of the group if I can write this as a product of an element of the translation subgroup times a, a rotation without translation if this is true then I have a symorphic group symorphic group and you can see this as the the group G it's like the direct product of the subgroup of translations and the group of of, of the point groups that uh, I have I call G this is more technically a, a, a semi semi-direct product there is a subtle difference between that and the direct product that we have uh, discussed before but this is a technical point which is not very interesting now uh, but we can come back to that later but this is a so-called semi-direct product but I think you understand the idea right so T is a translation subgroup translation subgroup and G is a point group so for a non-symorphic group I cannot do that I cannot write that way so the only way to, to factor out the translations for non-symorphic group is, is, is like we, we did in the previous slide to consider the factor group so for non-symorphic we have to consider the factor group to define the point group of the crystal okay all right okay let let me talk about a, a simple example that shows us that sometimes we need to be careful that not all crystal structures with a basis of two equivalent atoms they are correspond to a, 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 a non-symorphic group uh, because it, it seems that that whenever we have a translation in our system uh, with a lattice with a vector that is uh, smaller than a primitive lattice vector then it seems that we would have a, 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 a non-symorphic group but this is not the case and let me explain to you why as an using i'm going to use an as an example graphene so graphene is this hexagonal lattice of carbon atoms and we have two atoms per unit cell a and b these are both carbon atoms but they are not 
equivalent by translation, but they are equivalent by symmetry. There are symmetry operations that take one atom into the other atom, right? So, and uh, sometimes people could think that perhaps this is um, the, the, the symmetry operation that takes A into B, it's, uh, it's, uh, can only be written as a compound uh, uh, point group plus translation symmetry because you have this translation vector tau smaller than the lattice vectors of graphene so for instance you, you could think that uh, for instance if I choose this one as, as my main symmetry axis and uh, if I want to rotate by 2 pi over 6 so if I rotate by 2 pi over 6 uh, about this axis then atom B goes to the center of this axis right and to take it to uh, to uh, an atom A I have to translate by tau so one could think that this is the only way to use a 2 pi over 6 uh, symmetry operation in gra graphene but that's not the case if you choose your origin carefully if you choose your origin for instance at the center of an hexagon it could also be the middle of a bond but if you if you it's more common to use the center of the hexagon then you can see clearly that you can take a sublattice a to sublattice b using simply a 2 pi over 6 rotation without any translation okay so actually graphene is not a non-symorphic uh, structure it's a, it's a symorphic structure because you can find an origin of a coordinate system in the case in this case the center of an hexagon in which you can uh, basically decouple all your space group symmetries into a product of pure translations and pure point group rot rotation reflections etc okay so this is an important point that sometimes one needs to be careful about okay so let's go ahead now and, and discuss some general properties of brevet lattices and space groups this is a review of uh, things that you may have seen in basic solid state physics. So, um, in three dimensions, there are 14 different ways to arrange mathematically, to arrange a set of points in space so that you, each point is indistinguishable by symmetry of any other point. So, it sees exactly the same environment as any other point. These are the 14 Brevet lattices. They are listed here. You have the triclinic, the monoclinic, the monoclinic base-centered, the orthorhombic, sorry, orthorhombic, simple orthorhombic, uh, uh, base-centered orthorhombic, body-centered orthorhombic, the face centered orthorhombic then we have the hexagonal brevet lattice rhombohedral tetragonal simple tetragonal body centered tetragonal simple cubic face uh, body centered cubic and face centered cubic so these are the four possible uh, arrangements called the brevet lattice and they each have their own set of uh, primitive vectors okay so this is in 3d uh, next lecture we're gonna see uh, the two dimensional brevet lattices and now if you consider now the different uh, possible arrangements of atoms in these systems that is how in how many different ways I can uh, arrange different sets of atoms in, in these systems then this leads us to the 230 
space groups. There are 230 possibilities. So these are the 230 uh, crystal structures and 73 of them are symorphic and 157 are non-symorphic. So whatever crystal that you think about, it's it falls within one of those 230 space groups. There are no other possibility in terms of symmetry to arrange atoms in a periodic way in space. Okay? So these 230 space groups, they are all listed. I'm going to show them to you in a minute. And 33 of them are symorphic, uh, 157 are non-symorphic. So, and how do I couple this uh, translation symmetries with point group operations, for instance, rotations? So, as we have discussed that before in this course, it's not rotation of any arbitrary angle that it's possible when you have to arrange to, to arrange a certain, let's say, a certain molecule in a periodic way. So th there are only translations that uh, one can uh, have are two-fold, three-fold, four-fold, and six-fold symmetry axes. So these are only the, the only possible choices for uh, rotations that are compatible with translation symmetry. Okay. So these are the I'm, I'm, I list here the, the 73 symorphic space groups. This is a notation that it is important to get used to. P means a primitive. I, whenever you have an I here, it means a body center. So this is a, these are the primitive tetragonal. These are the body center tetragonal space groups. When you have an F, it's a face-centered. When you have A, B, or C, it's a base-centered, and it could be along different uh, axes, A, B, C. And you have, when you have R, it means you have a rhombohedral Bravais lattice. Okay, this is the the. Uh, remember that um, Hermann uh, Magan. Uh, uh, symmetry notation combined with this notation for Bravais lattices. The Hermann Magan, it's a notation for the, the, the point group, right? Okay. So these are the a list of all the 73 space, symorphic space group, and this is a list of all 230 space groups. Um, both symorphic and non-symorphic. This is in the table C, C1 of our textbook. And you, you see that all groups, they have a specific number. So you, you can also specify a, a certain crystal structure by just saying what is the number of the space group. Uh, that means uh, space group 134. So you know already that this corresponds to a certain uh, Bravais lattice and particular type of point group operation. Okay, this is this is a single notation that everybody uses. It's an international notation. Okay, an another tool that is going to be important to us. In, in analysis of space groups is the so-called international tables for X-ray crystallography. And this is a compilation of all, proper, all different properties of these different point groups. For instance, if you go there, it, this is a, a one, one page. This is one page of this big, this, it's a big blue book. Uh, and this is one page. Each page contains information of a given space group. So here on top, you're going to see the number of the group. This is group 2 to 1. 
the, both the Hermann Magan and the Schanflis notation, so this is OH, mean this means this is a cubic group. OH1 means that there are other cubic groups. This, this is the first one. There are other space groups with the same point group belonging, uh, corresponding to the same point group OH. So this is the OH1. Okay? So it says here cubic. Uh, what else? So th there is also information about uh, Wyckoff special positions. We are going to see uh, in more detail what they mean in the next lecture. But uh, let's see a few of them. Let's see, for instance, um, okay, so there, there are many possible crystal arrangements that correspond to this uh, particular space group. And that is a simple group, simple cubic group, sorry, simple cubic Bravais lattice, but for instance, you can have an arrangement like this one, in which uh, you have atoms only on, on the vertices of a cubic system. I, I take the origin at the, cent at the center of the cube, so this corresponds to placing atoms at this one half, one half, one half special positions. So okay, these are one half, one half, one half special positions. So all these positions are equivalent by symmetry. This is a position B, but I can always play. I, I can also place atoms at the origin, zero, zero, zero. And here in this other figure, I do both. I have one atom at the origin and another atom at the vertices of the cubic, right? So you see that this is our equivalent by translation. So th this is actually only one atom if I consider uh, translation symmetry. So, and I can also uh, place atoms in uh, position, special position C, in which I have uh, the center of the faces. So you have three possible positions in the center along X, Y, and Z. So this is the structure of, of tit um, uh, baryon titanate. And in, in this case, I have position A, the titanium atom, and position B, the barium atom. You have one titanium and one barium per unit cell. And in position C, I have the oxygen, three oxygen atoms. I have three oxygens per unit cell. It looks like I have more, right? It looks like I have six atoms. But you have to remember that if an atom is at the center of a face, it's like it counts half. Because it, this, atoms, this atom is, is shared between uh, neighboring unit cells, right? So, and the same for the atoms in the vertices. An atom in the vert, in the vertex of a, uh, in the vertice of, of a cube, of a cube, it's like, it counts like one eighth, because it's surrounded by eight unit cells. So, so these are the special positions that, uh, uh, using the Wyckoff notation that we're going to discuss that next lecture. Uh, in, in this chapter we're going to use a lot both the international tables of X-ray crystallography and the, this book by Wyckoff. It's called Crystal Structure. And this is a very good reference book on, uh, on crystallography as well. As well. It has uh, the, the crystal structures for many, many different crystals. All right, so let's do an example. Uh, because another important concept, as we've seen already, is the equivalence representation, right? We, we've, seen, we've seen equivalence representation for molecules. So it's exactly the same thing for, for crystals. We just have to look, uh, to find the characters, we have to look how many atoms remain invariant by the different symmetry operations of the group. 
but you need to be careful about translation symmetry. As I said before, in this particular example of titanium, uh, of barium titanate, we have just one titanium atom per unit cell, just one barium atom, and three oxygen atoms per unit cell. So you need to be careful uh, when you apply a certain rotation, a certain point group operation, and to verify that if one atom goes into itself, you need to take into account translation. So if this atom in this phase goes, it, it's mapped into uh, this atom in the opposite phase, we say that this is mapped into the same atom. It, it's invariant. Why? Because these two atoms, they are related by a primitive lattice vector. Okay? And the same for these two atoms, the same for these two atoms, and the same for all titanium atoms and all barium atoms in this unit cell. Okay? <coughs> I hope you are familiar with, with this concept. If you're not, this is in basic uh, solid state physics uh, books and courses. So let's use this particular example, which is titanium um, baryon titanate, and uh, let's calculate the equivalence characters, the equivalence representation characters for this system. Uh, we know this is a cubic group. This is the OH, OH point group. Uh, we have all these different uh, symmetry operations, all these different uh, irreducible representations, and uh, let's calculate the characters of the equivalence representation for separate, for, for all different atoms in a separate way, for, for barium, but this is, as we, this is also going to be the case for titanium, right? Because we have just one atom per unit cell. So f for both baryon and for titanium, we can see that for all symmetry operations of, of the, the group, the at the both atoms remain invariant, right? Because there's only one atom for each kind of, of baryon titanium in this unit cell. So this is one for all sim for all classes. So this is the in this notation this is the A1 plus the identity representation. In in other notations uh, we will see it's it's written as gamma one as well. Okay. So the, it's more inter the more interesting case is to consider the atom site representation for oxygen. We have three oxygens in the unit cell, so when I apply identity, both of all the three of them remain invariant. So let's see, C4 squared, it, this is a C2 rotation about X, Y, or Z, right? When I do that C2 rotations about, let's say, about this, the z-axis, let's say this is the z-axis, when I rotate by pi, the, the oxygen atom along z does not move, the, the oxygen atom on x and y, they move to the opposite phase. And as I said before, this is the same as if they were invariant, if I take into account translation. So this is 3 as well. They don't move. They, they remain invariant. Now, for C4, just the atom along the axis remain invariant. So this is one. For C2 prime, uh, for C2 prime, this is the same thing. Just one atom. Let's say, this is a, let, let's take this case here. Uh, this is a C2 prime axis, let's see. From the center, to the center of this edge, right? This is a C2 prime axis. When I rotate, Z goes to minus Z, so it remains invariant by a translation. 
but x goes into y and y goes into x so they change so the only atom that remains invariant is the, the oxygen atom along z so this is one and for c3 I permu I permu there's a permutation of the three atoms so this is zero for inversion they go into the opposite faces so this is three again and you can see that this is an even representation so I can just write oops one one and uh, this other guy here which is zero okay then if I decompose that you can you can uh, verify that this is a1 plus plus e plus in, in other notations you will find it as gamma 1 plus gamma 1 2 so this is an example about how you can find the equivalence the characters of the equivalence representations for for crystals and not for molecules now, the only thing you need to worry about is how to take into account the the translations by by uh, lattice vectors okay sometimes it's useful also to, to calculate the total equivalence representation and the characters you, you see that uh, just take barium plus titanium plus oxygen and that's then you have three three gamma one plus gamma one two okay all right so this is another example uh, is a hypothetical molecule this is just to show you that when I have uh, a molecule that I placed into a crystal that I crystallized the molecule in some cases it uh, the the symmetries of the crystal will be the, the point group symmetry of the crystal will be the same as the molecule or in other cases it will be lowered okay so the molecule may lower the the crystal symmetry of a system so for instance this is a hypothetical molecule with uh, uh, d2d symmetry it has four atoms and they are arranged in this manner it has a two c2 prime axis it has a, a s4 improper rotation it has c2 uh, uh, rotations and it has sigma d it has a, a diagonal planes okay uh, if i place this atom in a tetragonal bravel lattice this is what i get i still retain the same symmetry I, originally the the tetragonal uh, bravel lattice had the c4 rotation symmetry but when i place this atom with uh, which does not have uh, a C4 rotation, then I lowered the symmetry of of the the tetragonal Bravais lattice, and I I I, I have a, a, a actually in this case a tetragonal a Bravais lattice, but a crystal structure with D to D sim, uh, symmetry. Okay, and uh, this is the case either if I consider the molecule with the axis the molecular bond placed along uh, the let's say the a axis or along the diagonal here okay so this is another thing one needs to worry about for instance uh, the, this molecule has a lower symmetry than a cubic in, than a cube so if I place this molecule in 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 the centers of a cubic lattice certainly I will not retain all the symmetry operations of, of the cubic system okay so I will lower I, I will still have a cubic uh, Bravais lattice but the, the, the symmetry of the point groups is, is going to be lowered okay finally let me consider one example of a non-symorphic space group 
And this is a famous example because we're going to use that a lot in, in the course. And this is the diamond lattice. So the diamond lattice is um, also is, is the same crystal structure of silicon and germanium is such that I have a face centered cubic brevet lattice. This is the diamond structure. A face centered cubic brevet lattice, you see the blue atoms here. And you add also another carbon atom displaced from the, this atom here in the ver from, from each atom I displace I displace uh, by one fourth of the diagonal of the main cube diagonal. So I do that for every atom. So every carbon, every blue carbon atom has a neighbor that is displaced with respect to it by a, a, a small vector, which is one fourth of it's along the, the main diagonal it's one fourth of the main diagonal okay for this guy is I displace here for this guy it goes like here this guy goes here and so on and so forth and this is the brevet lattice sorry this is the crystal structure of diamond and you, you see that uh, it, one can also visualize this crystal structure as the as two interpenetrating FCC lattices okay this is another way to see that so if you look at the local arrangement of a, a certain carbon atom you see that in the in the center of a tetrahedral made by the the four the neighbors each carbon or silicon atom has four neighbors and it's in the center of a tetrahedron okay so one would think that perhaps considering if you consider this this uh, local symmetry you could think that uh, the group is td td is the tetrahedral symmetry group but actually this is the a cubic system it has oh symmetry why because there are symmetry operations that take one carbon atom to the neighboring carbon atoms in the sense that take the blue sub lattice into the green sub lattice and these operations are precisely uh, screw axis operations so the screw axis you can see more easily in this projection so this is the same structure the diamond structure just uh, uh, it's uh, it's a different uh, way of drawing it uh, but if you look at the projection along z along the the z axis this is what you see you see atoms in the vertices of the cube four atoms corresponding to these four atoms here in the vertices you see atoms in the center of the face right here this guy And you see that there is a screw axis because you, if you rotate, so you look at the, the projection of these atoms here, which so which are the corresponding to the, the the green atoms here, are those one right here? This guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Okay. If you if you uh, look from the top, they are the projections are here but the vertical displacements is like one fourth one fourth three fourths three fourths the vertical coordinate here you see one fourth one fourth for these two atoms three fourths three fourths with respect to one one is the lattice constant And sorry, these other guys here in the edges, they are one half. They correspond to these faces here, the, the, the atoms in, in, the, in the lateral faces. So you see the screw axis because if I rotate by 2 pi over 4, this takes, uh, uh, I need to translate 
by a, a certain lattice vector in the vertical direction to take one, one atom to the other. So this is a, an example of a non-symorphic uh, symmetry with a, with a screw uh, symmetry operations. The, the, the screw symmetry axis is right here and you, you see it will take this the atom in, at, at the bottom to one in, in one fourth to one half to three fourths. Okay? It's harder to visualize here, but in the projection it's easy to visualize. It takes one atom to from one sublattice to the atom in the other sublattice. So this is an important example of a, a non symorphic uh, space group, the diamond structure. Alright, so and this is it for today and thank you very much.